People were surprised that the British voted Churchill out of office in exchange for a socialist. But there had been much to be surprised about with America's brothers across the sea, unbreakably bonded by a common language. And while it was no secret that Churchill had lost a fortune in the great crash of 1929, it was also no secret that Churchill was not actually descended from the great Marlborough Churchill, but it didn't matter because he thought he was, and many aspiring historians were willing to back him up on that claim. At the beginning of the Great War, Churchill had taken a brigade to Holland where the French had been supposed to meet him, but the French had failed to show because they were busy fighting Germans, and Churchill's brigade was ordered to fall back but were cut off by the enemy and 57 of his men died, with three times that many wounded. Churchill's brigade surrendered and spent the rest of the war interned in Germany while Churchill stayed in Belgium and spent the remainder of the war familiarizing himself with the terrain around Caen and Calais, and Churchill kept a bronze bust of Napoleon on his desk. On Sunday night, the 26th of February, he slipped out of harbor in his brig. Within 18 days of his landing, Napoleon was installed in the capital. Wellington recommended the immediate transport of an army to the Netherlands. The King of Britain was still King of Hanover. Hanoverian troops meant to take the offensive. During the early days of June, tension was heightening. Quietly on June 15, Napoleon struck at the hinge of the Allied armies. The capture of Brussels would be a great forward stride. Possession of a capital city was always a lure for him and a source of strength. Napoleon had in mind the vision of a shattered British army grimly awaiting transports for home in the Flemish ports. He ordered Nia to attack and then meet him that evening in Brussels. By nightfall, Nia had not gained his objective. Brussels was not in his grasp. Marshal Blücher was outgeneraled, his army split in two, battered by the magnificent French artillery and driven back. Napoleon decided in the small hours of the 17th to send Marshal Grouchet with 33,000 men to pursue the Prussians while he flung his main weight against Wellington. The crisis of the campaign was at hand. There seems no doubt that in the opening days Wellington had been surprised. As he confessed at the time, Napoleon's movements had humbugged him. But immediately after the battle, his methodical mind was in full command of the situation. Wellington himself had inspected this Belgian countryside in the autumn of 1814. He had noted the advantages of the ridge at Waterloo. So had the great Duke of Marlborough a century earlier. Throughout the night of the 16th and 17th, a carefully screened retreat began, and by morning, the Waterloo position, a line of defense such as Wellington had already tested in the peninsula, was occupied. Upon the French must be forced the onus of a frontal attack. Napoleon, furious to hear of Wellington's skillful withdrawal, pounded in his carriage down the Brussels road with his advance guard in a desperate attempt to entrap the British rear. The mercy of a violent storm slowed up progress. An angry scene took place upon the meeting of Napoleon and Nia, who was greeted with the words from the Emperor, You have ruined France. Churchill's History, page 400-2 Wellington had been saved in the peninsula when his Jewish banker made gold available from Frankfurt to pay off the enemy, and it had taken Napoleon 100 days to get to Waterloo, so it was no surprise that Market Garden had been slated for the 17th of September in 1944 that was exactly 100 days after D-Day. The city of Charleroi in Belgium had been named after Charles II of Spain, and when he died childless, the War of the Spanish Succession fired off from 1701 to 1714, and the fight had been over the port of Antwerp, and it had ended with the establishment of the British House of Hanover. Marlborough Churchill had wanted to withdraw completely from the Spanish Netherlands halfway through the war in 1706, taking his British troops instead over to Italy, 
but the Dutch had refused the plan. Marlborough Churchill's loyalty had always been in question after his betrayal of his monarch, James II, and Marlborough Churchill had been replaced before the Battle of Denien in July of 1712 because the British needed someone they could trust to obey orders. The War of the Spanish Succession had dragged on until the French gathered 200,000 soldiers to the battlefield in May of 1712, and the British commander, who had replaced Marlborough, was told to stand down so his Dutch and Austrian allies would be left to the mercy of the French during the Battle of Denien. Just inside the French border, Denien was between Tournai and Mons, and in the Battle of Denien that July of 1712, the French had trapped the Dutch on the wrong side of a river, and they blew all the bridges and killed thousands, and captured the Dutch commander. And when the Dutch tried to cross another bridge, it also collapsed as they were crossing, and hundreds of Dutchmen drowned. The Battle of Denien was a major turning point in the war, ending with the Treaty of Utrecht that forced everyone to recognize the House of Hanover. And while the Dutch were drowning and the Austrians were being slaughtered, the British made a separate peace with France behind the backs of their allies. The War of the Spanish Succession had seen Austria and France fighting over Trieste because France had been France had been gaining too much power in northern Italy that was allowing them to blockade the Austrians sailing in and out of the lovely port of Trieste. The Treaty of Utrecht took Silesia away from the Austrian Catholics and gave it to the Protestant Prussians, and the British claimed to have stood down from the Battle of Denain because they needed to march to Dunkirk to hold it for Britain rather than helping their allies. In order to cover up that betrayal, George I would have Marlborough Churchill's replacement commander put on trial and had his estates and titles taken away, and that commander would move to Spain to help with a plot to put the great pretender back on the British throne. The House of Hanover had originally come from the line of Bernards, who had ruled in Hanover since the 14th century, and the primary purpose of giving George I of Hanover the crown of Britain 300 years later in 1714 was to exclude Catholics from the English throne forever. Hanover had been partitioned in 1375 between three brothers, and Bernard I was given Luneburg a territory encompassing over 4,000 square miles. And Monty was descended from and named after that original line of Bernard I, Bernard I of Luneburg, the Bernard who'd been one of the three sons of Duke Magnus who had ruled Hanover in 1367. Bernards reigned from their house in Luneburg until the Holy Roman Emperor Leopold I made the Duke of Hanover an elector of the Holy Roman Empire in 1692, and with George I and his House of Hanover, the Duchy of Luneburg became not only part of the United Kingdom, but also remained in the Holy Roman Empire from 1714 to 1837, when Victoria became the Queen of England, and under Queen Victoria, Hanover could no longer be part of the Ro Holy Roman Empire, because no female was allowed to be the Holy Roman Emperor. Instead, Hanover became its own kingdom, so they could stay a member of the Holy Roman Empire, and the Kingdom of Hanover lasted until 1866, when it was given to Prussia. The strange thing about Hanover was that it was legally bound to be indivisible, so it could not be split up among any heirs, and its succession was to follow male primogeniture, and that meant that Monty was fighting for his own personal claim to Hanover, not just for the land, but for an actual claim to being the lawful Holy Roman Emperor. And if Britain could make a separate peace with Hitler and turn around to help Germany defeat the Russians, then Monty would have won back both his ancestral lands as well as his title, at which point Bernard Law Montgomery 
would actually have been in the running with Hitler to become the Holy Roman Emperor, and it would have been difficult to find a more qualified candidate than Monty because Hitler was, after all, just a commoner.